Okay. Welcome to For Media, folks, where we provide a voice and a social connection with furries from around the world. My name is Space, and I'm joined by my lovely host, Punya. And we welcome you guys to this evening's show. In the background, we have our returning guest, Mothsicles. <laughs> so, oh! <laughs> and uh, they are uh, where she is taping up a foot. A foot. Um, yeah. She was going to do the uh, feet paws, but she's actually doing another set of what? Socks? Sock paws. Sock paws. So it's got like the same. It pretty much has like the same type of process. So she's going to be doing that in the background. Um, but before we get to our show, a couple of things that I want to uh, talk about real quick. Um, one thing is every once in a while when we do shows and we go off on side tangents, which happens all the time, um, we have fans that will be like, oh, I'm going to draw that. So <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we had a show recently called Skype Furries, and um, we were talking. One of the questions was, is who would be the leader against all the Sonic fans? And I think we had suggested something along the lines of, I think Telephone would be the best leader. Um, and then we could all just like Mighty Morph and Power Range it. And so just like <laughs> all like connect together. <laughs> Wait, that's a verb now. <laughs> what, Mighty Morph and Power Range it? Yep, Mighty Morph and Power Range it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Great, I'm going to have to remember to use that. <laughs> please do. <laughs> so, um. <clears throat> Someone actually drew this, and it's fantastic. The uh, the artist is uh, Luna. L let's see, Luna Huet, Luna Wet, Luna Luna Wet, Luna Wet. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. If you give me pronunciation parentheses, that'd be fantastic. Um, I think Luna Wet. Is Luna Wet. Luna Wet. Mm -hmm. I would imagine it's like silhouette. Oh yeah. Um, so it looks like they're also a Dutch Angel Dragon as well. So they had drawn this, and it's actually really cute. Um, if I if I go in too far, though, it kind of like blurs out the image a little bit. And they tried to upload it as high quality as possible, but either way, it's all so much fun. Um, <laughs> so you got like the Sonic fans in the background, and you got. Could you zoom in a little more? I am zoomed in. A little in. bit small. Just a little bit more. Oh, there you go. That's as Perfect. big. That's as most as I can go in. Okay. <laughs> so you got telephone right here talking to all of us and all of our duchies and stuff. Is that, is that a panda? That looks like a panda right there, like a panda outline, um, like the panda from Full Metal Alchemist, whatever that panda's name. Um, and then you got like the the frustrated Sonic fans in the background. And then you got her going three, three, squeak, squeak. And then all of a sudden, swing, here comes a sword. <laughs> and then you got the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers right here. <laughs> the Mighty Mor Morphin Fur Rangers. <laughs> so you got a couple of them and then boom. You got mega, mega, t megaphone. It's basically what it is. <laughs> megaphone. It's not telephone. It's megaphone. <laughs> and megaphone turns into like uses one of their special powers, which is a bowling ball. And megaphone throws it, and like all the little fans go everywhere. It's kind of funny. And then there's there's this guy. And he's like, hey, it, it looks like there's a ball rolling. All of a sudden, it just says ring, ring, and then it just blows through the door. So. <laughs> I like that it like kind of like knocks at the door kind of and it's just sitting there and then it just goes boom <laughs> it just hits so that's I think, fantastic <laughs> that is absolutely great you know I wish someone would like make a full series of like a comic series of all the things that we've talked about in past shows and we could just make a book out of it and then just give it away <laughs> I guess that would be awesome just like a recollection of all the things that we've done. So this is fun. Thank you so much, Luna Wet, for doing that. Um, it's always fun when people do this. Yeah, this is a really great comic, and, and it's really nice to see the fans make stuff like this. It's, gosh, Space sends me stuff all the time. It's just like, oh, my God, look at what so-and-so made for us. And we just gush about it and laugh and 
these really do just touch our hearts. We love getting these. Oh, 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 o
Um, another thing, if you're going to the convention itself and you want to meet me, you need to look for a specific badge. And I go back to Twitter for that one. I'm going to be wearing an official for media badge. It's this one right here, actually. So if you see me wearing this badge, you need to stop me. You need to take a picture with me, and then you need to upload it onto Twitter or onto Facebook or tag me in somehow you can, and hashtag it as for media BLFC 2016 and then you will get a chance to win to be a host or a co-host with us on the BLFC review show, which will happen a week afterwards of the awesome. convention itself. So that is something you can do. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I am dying to meet some of my fans, if not all of my fans, but it just depends on who's going. So um, I'll be wearing that. And then I'm also wearing a super awesome badge that Mosticles made for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show that later. Um, but without further ado, if you guys joined us on our first show, which was back in April? Yes. Uh, when was that? April? No, it was in March. March 29th, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was in March because in April it was... Yeah. My, my wedding. Yeah. That's still yeah. pretty close. <laughs> okay, so it was back in March. So we had about... I gave ourselves enough time to build a feet pause, but it turns out that new what was it murphy's law definitely took a beating mm -hmm. um at on on my side over here as we lost an employee then the wedding happened and all this stuff and so i just didn't have any time to really work on the feet paws as i wanted to but i tried to get as much done um and we learned how to make feet paws so in the second sh part we're going to learn how to fur them or pad them and fur them and then i will show you along the way my struggles of making feet paws. And I think I've spent over 18 hours now. Um, and that, those are, so two, uh, six hour, no, about 14 hours, two six hour long shifts of making feet paws going into the wee hours of the morning. It was rough, but it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot. <laughs> I'm glad you had fun with it. Yeah, I definitely had a lot of fun with it. Um, I got both of them at least foamed. One of them is uh, furred somewhat. And um, Luna went, I got your file, and I will download that a little bit later. Um, not the moment. So, okay, so uh, tell us what you're making right now it's for the fans again. Right now, I'm working on some sock paws. It's actually my very first pair of sock paws, so they might not be super pro. But these are for my Wolf Link cosplay that I'm working on. And I just did all this foam in a couple of hours ago. Actually, I was rushing to finish them in time for the stream so I could fur them. And I just taped this one, and I'm starting to draw out where I want to cut the patterns. So I have the paw pods drawn here, and all the lines where I'm going to be cutting the tape off drawn out. That's what I have right now. So. And I'm actually going to pull up um, a picture of your moth, or not your moth skulls, your wolf link picture. Go for it. Because um, it's really, I thought it was way cute. And I'm like, oh man, so cute. He's actually back here with me. Oh, bring him up. Okay, well, this is what, uh, so from Facebook. This is what it looks like right here. It's super yeah. cute. Oh, I the love Facebook that. The Facebook picture will be better because the lighting in here is terrible, so he's going to look kind of terrible in here. But. So you got the Lynx hat, the wolf. It's just the colors and everything is just so perfect. And I saw this and I'm just like, it's a done deal. Forget all the other fursuit makers. I'm going to you when I have the money to get a fursuit because this is just adorbs. <laughs> I, I have to. Um... But with that, let's go ahead and take a look at... Oh, look, you're wearing... Yep. Oh, my God, Amazing. people. How cute is this? <laughs> Are the eyes glowing? No, I wish I could do that, but... I don't know how to work LEDs yet. They do follow you, though. Following my eyes are crazy. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly enough, the resin base that's under this, this head has been made into... Technically, four different characters because I've stripped it down and reused it so many times. Wow. <laughs> this is his final form, though. I'm not going to re-strip him again. 
That is so cool. I made it originally three years ago to be a, my a, ahead of my persona, and then I wanted to sell it, so I changed the design to be a different character, and I sold it to my friend for really cheap, and then he didn't wear it, so he gave it back to me this year in exchange for some art, and then I turned it into that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And you were you were saying that you and someone else collabed on a fursuit? Oh, uh, yes. I collaborated with Green Fox Fursuits and, gosh, I don't remember the other person's name because they jumped in last minute to add in. But um, the person that has it now is actually going to Biggest Little Fur Con to sell the suit. Do you have a and link to a, it? It's a pink and white Monster. I can link pictures, yeah. Um, while you're linking that, the fact that she can strip down a fursuit head multiple times and still have it look really good, it's pretty amazing. Because I don't know of many artists that actually do that. I think they just start over. But it's probably more cost effective for you, I'm sure, just to strip it down and then use the same base. Oh, here it is. Okay, so what's actually happening right now is it's on Furbri right now to be sold as a full bodysuit to be made for somebody, but the partial piece is already made. And it only has about six hours left, and if the bidding goes down with no buyers, then the person is going to bring it to BLFC to try to sell as just a partial. Is it the custom digigrade monster suit? Yes, I just linked it in chat too. Okay. So that's it right now. Um, I don't have any pictures of it myself because I sent it off, but they took pictures, I think, with their phone or something. But they'll get better ones once the bodysuit is created for whoever buys it. Interesting choice of font. Did you write on the font? No, I, I haven't done anything with the suit okay. since I made the phone base parts. So they set up the auction and all of that. If anyone doesn't know, that's actually Disney's font, so... It is, yeah. I that too. I, I made the foam base head and the foam base for the arms, and then they finished everything else. Just a little... You don't have anything to worry about this, but folks, just a little insider tip here. If you're going to logo... If you're going to make a logo for yourself, never use an existing logo font. So never use, like, Disney or someone else because they will come at you like a biznatch this is okay though this is just like describing it but if like the company like the other fursuit people if they were to like use their name but then use it in disney font i'd be a little worried <laughs> for, yeah, yeah for them <laughs> so just a little little insider information for you all if you guys want to do your own <laughs> thing this is actually really cute it looks like cotton candy <laughs> it does Oh, cool. And then they have the um, the paws that you can put your hands outside of them. You don't see that very often in a lot of suits. But when you do, you're like, gosh, I wish I had the option to do that. <laughs> um, I've seen, um, I've had, I can link this into uh, the chat here so that everyone can take a look at it for themselves. There you go. There's the link for the fur buy auction. Um, <laughs> no bids so far. Auction ends. Yeah, they're gonna try to sell it as a partial at the con. We think nobody's bidding because no one can just afford a full suit right now. So we're gonna just try to sell it as a partial. Do they even have the full suit up? It's to be made for whoever wins the auction, so it'll fit. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, wait, wait, there's a... Adult plush custom SPH. Well, we won't click on those. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stay away from those <laughs> those links right there. Um, this is actually really cool. Uh, I I know of one person that has those hand paws, and his name is Yuriu, and he's a dragon, and he actually plays piano. So he takes his paws off in a way. It looks like his paws are still on. But his hands are loose and free on the bottom. So if he wanted to, he can play. Now, it'd be kind of cool if Felix had that same option because I know he plays violin. So if he wanted to do that same sort of thing, he could. Um, he would just have to work with the maker and see if they can edit that. But 
Um, that's that's always a cool option. But like Punya said, and I said, I've never seen. I have. I hardly ever see anyone do that. Mm. It's not something you see very often. Um, okay, so while you are wait, what are you doing right now? Are you cutting foam out? I'm cutting the duct tape patterns where I cut the line or where I drew the lines. Oh man. Okay, so duct taping a fursuit foot paw. Interesting ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> Makes your hands raw. Well, it really didn't make my hands raw because I'm used to like working with sanitizer water and, and things all day. So I, could, I think my hands and everything else is pretty rough. But um, I, I will say that the whole like duct tape part, duct taping your fursuit because it's already foamed and then marking the different parts. Like I actually split my my duct tape part and I put right side, right foot and then left side, right foot. And then on the toes themselves, I labeled each one and like different code. And our roommate that's like across from the table, he's making an Umbreon fursuit. And he's like, what do those mean? And I'm like, oh no, no, these are just like shorthand abbreviations. So I know what toe goes where. It was, it was, it was actually kind of hard. I messed up on the first few runs. And then after I got it, then I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Except for you the- You were so determined. <laughs> It messes you up the most because the way you tape it, you have to remember that the silver side is the side the fur is on. And yeah. some people will just stick it down and cut it out and forget to reverse it. And that's what messed me up the most when I started taping years and years ago. The other thing, too, that really, like, kind of just threw me off is that when you take the, the paws or the duct tape off, anything that goes around a round edge does not lay flat on newspaper. So you, you have, have to, like... Yeah, you have to cut it in such a way that it'll lay out, but you got to remember that also that's not the actual shape. And so that part got like a little confusing to me too. And I'm like looking at these instructions on my phone because I my laptop died and I didn't want to go grab the plug because Felix was asleep. It was like one o'clock in the morning. So I'm just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like trying to figure this <laughs> out. <laughs> there was some, there was some like moments. <laughs> Tacking is a chore. And furring. Oh my gosh, the furring. The fur goes everywhere. Oh like, yeah, I just cleaned my floor. <laughs> like, And you can't even vacuum it up, at least I can't, because it clogs up the vacuum. I have to take a separate wire brush that I use specifically to brush my carpet. Wow. We have, um, we have like, we did it on the tile, like in the kitchen area. It's like fake tile. And, uh, it just went everywhere. And I'm like, it's everywhere. I just washed this shirt. <laughs> and like, and there was like one foot paw. And, and Simon's just all like, oh, oh, yeah, it, it makes a big mess. And I'm like, I can see your mess. I can <laughs> see you didn't clean it up. I don't want to clean this up. <laughs> and I, when I'm all done, like there's just fur like on the counter. There's fur on the kitchen counter. There's fur on the like over on the carpet and it drives me nuts when there's things like that so i had to like before i went back to bed i swept and cleaned up the whole kitchen just to get rid of all the fur and i just shoved it into one little area because i'm like i can't vacuum it because everyone's asleep so this is gonna suck that's what it's you like can, to own a cat <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine um way a couple years ago my father was going through um a kidney transplant and the medicine they gave him made his skin really sensitive, so all of the fur that I was working with would make him itch. Oh. So for a couple of years, I had to work in the garage, I had to put on a full suit, I would have to walk into this room, strip my clothes, wash everything off, then go into the house. And for those couple of years, my first suit work was really slow because I physically could not work that much. It was crazy. And with the fur going everywhere, let me tell you, <laughs> it is horrible. I'm going to pull up some pictures of my fun experience. If anyone who joined us on the first show, has anyone attempted to make their own fursuit foot paw? And if so, do you have pictures of it? And following that up, can you link it to us so we can take a look at it? I want to see. Yes, we would love to see. Oh, I know that sound. That sound is just so wonderful. 
<laughs> okay, if anyone's ever attempted a fursuit in the past but would like to share with their work of how well they've done, then please, we would love to see it. Because any any improvement that you'd like to know about or where you can work on it or any any question you have about it, now's the time to ask uh, our guest. So if you have pictures of something you're like, hey, look, I've got this. We'll pull it up. Do you have any suggestions on how to work on the face? Then Monsticles over here can kind of help you out with that maybe. Yeah, for sure. Don't be shy, guys. I'm not mean. They're not a shy guy. Oh. To think, I'm not mean. <laughs> okay, so I've got one so far. I've got a link from Rebel Savant. I've got a ooh, a picture. Another one. Let me see this one. Oh, that looks rad. Oh, I love Brix's work. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to go back here and click on another picture here. Oh, that's just the picture that uh, Lunawet sent me. Um, um, we do have a question from Lunawet. No. Who asks, hey. Hey. <laughs> you pull those up. I'm going to ask the question. How expensive is it to make a full fursuit? Oh, geez. That all depends on your design and, like, if it's realistic, if it's toony, how many colors your character has. L the cheapest for a full suit without any padding, to... one color. Sorry, go ahead. Probably minimum $900 just to make the minimum basic. If you mm. get good fur and you have a sewing machine and you have the hot glue guns and all that so all right so before I share those pictures I want to show you my fun experience um, so we're gonna go out of the live video there for a second um, all right so what you're looking at is my computer <laughs> and <laughs> on my computer I have the first stage of uh, putting together the first suit feed pause. Now, what you see in the background, possibly, let me make sure I have my, sc my other viewing screen. There we go. Um, what you'll see in the background right here is this is actually Simon's foot paw for making the Umbreon suit. So we were both out there kind of doing our thing, and that was kind of fun. Um, then we go into here. This is the foam. So what I did is I kind of put together a an idea of how big I wanted the toes. I didn't really know how big the toes should be. Um, so I kind of just did my own thing. And Mots, you probably did send me, a, did you send me a schematic of how big the toes should be? I did not. Okay. Um, I remember you commenting on the big toes I had in the video, but that's for a really toony suit. If you wanted small, simple toes, that works just fine too. I think maybe in the future, I might make bigger toes. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of thing I had to work with. So what I did is I created patterns and then to save up on foam because I wasn't sure how much foam I would actually be using, um, I just basically duplicated all the patterns around and just used as much as I can. And you can see these other drawings over here because we were kind of trying to like trace around my foot like, oh, maybe the toe should be this big or maybe it should be that big. And so Simon and I were trying to like figure out, oh, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was hard. Um, this is what it looks like out, like totally laid out, the foam and everything. I bought myself, I didn't buy myself just a specific amount of foam. I actually bought myself full rolls of foam. So that way if I messed up, I had enough for errors, um, mm -hmm. which is something that I would suggest doing if you're doing on your first time. And I only spent maybe $50, maybe less than that on all the equipment that I needed because I used coupons like crazy. I'm the coupon <laughs> king. So... <laughs> And I used my, uh, my sales and discounts. Um, so what I did is I cut them out just like this. And then um, go over to the glue gun area. And I got this glue gun. The glue gun looks big. It's actually really small. It looks like a mini pistol. 
like a really tiny pistol. Um, that was the other thing that was like, oh man, I wish I had a bigger glue gun. This actually might be a lot easier. So, um, what I did is I uh, glued them together, like so, and I think I've got pictures of the glues right there. So I glued them together, and as Simon had suggested, maybe you should have like glued other ends together so when you make your dome, your dome looks better. And I'm like. This is how the picture says it, so I'm going to do it exactly as the picture tells me. So, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I like pictures. I like pictures. <laughs> and then I stuffed it with um, with the stuffing. I forgot what it's called. Poly... Polyfill. Polyfill, yeah. Pillow filler. And then I rearranged them around my feet paw. And then um, I did my own kind of shaving down. I made the... I, you can see right here, actually, I went through two different thoughts. I thought maybe I should do the feet, like, toes like this. But someone had made a, um, a, a mention to me that depending on how you line up your toes is going to be how you're going to stand. So I can hear myself repeating. Does anyone else hear that? Mm -mm. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, maybe it's just me. Um... <laughs> So, uh, basically, some toony paws are so big that your feet will actually start to waddle out like a duck. And then I decided to rearrange my toes like this because I discovered something actually quite cool. As I step, the toes roll with the step. Um, so I'm able to walk straight without having to worry about pushing my feet outwards. And then I don't have to worry about my hips hurting later on in the day if I choose to wear this all day. So I went to go along with this one. And I glued them down. And I'm wearing these running shoes. They're, they're actually work shoes. Um, but they're running shoes. And so I thought this will be the best way to do it. Um, to get the angle right, I actually had to put my foot upwards on the edge of a donut box. <laughs> and, <laughs> hey, it works. <laughs> and, uh, and then I glued them on like that and let them sit. And that takes a long time. Like, you got to let the glue set. And then you got to get the next one on there. And you got to let that set. And... Oh, it took time. And then a I got labor a, of love. It is a labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got these ones. And I realized, oh my god, oh, these nice together. These feet paws are gonna be huge. Um because I got <laughs> I got eleven and a half a size shoes. Bear. They're supposed to be. Yeah, but look uh, at it that way. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So uh someone's looking up or if if polar bear feet paws are supposed to be big. <laughs> <laughs> so then I did the foaming process. Um, I made some mistakes here, but it's actually a mistake that I'm glad that I made. Um, as I was filming it around, um, I realized that I didn't give myself enough room right here. And this is where I'm going to call the V-neck of the shoe. Um, the shoe tongue is actually right there. And so I need to be able to pull the shoe tongue up so I can get my foot into the shoe itself. I didn't make enough room for that on the original piece so I cut away completely and added an extra foam. I'm glad I did that because now I have plenty of room and it adds a little bit of definition to the foot as it is. So you can kind of see a little bit more there now that it's, it's like I'm wearing my feet paws and I'm like I'm wearing my feet paws. I feel so special. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it was really it was really cool. And then the next step was the more frustrating part was the furring part. <laughs> it's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like doing the foam, but on a grander scale. And so what you have to do is you have to draw like these patterns, and then um, you have to go like an inch and in, or half an inch to an inch outwards, so you give yourself enough room for sewing and anything else. Which was another thing I didn't read the instruction. I didn't realize you had to sew, and I was so pissed that I had to <laughs> sew because I'm like it's two o'clock in the freaking morning I had to sew <laughs> dang it <laughs> so, I was so mad um, but I, I figured it out um, Simon had these really cool like clips they're called wonder clips and so I, I clipped all the way around the toe itself and you turn them inside out and I, I thought that was actually really cool the process of turning them inside out and then right side back in after they're done it looks so pretty um and i i made my 
like ghetto sketch like ghetto um sewing skills right stitch. here <laughs> yeah you get the stitch so 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 i did that <laughs> And then I turned them inside out, and they actually fit on the feet paws, like the oh, the toes, yeah. perfectly. So I chose. Look at your fuzzy teeth. I know. <laughs> They're really cute, actually. Um, what I realized is that, like, um, I went to Joanne's because I wanted to get the furring done before mm -hmm. the show, and they didn't have the right color. They didn't even have dark blue as the paw itself. And then I saw that, like, on my design, like, my fursona has just all blue feet. Um, but when it comes to a fursona, it was where you wouldn't be able to see anything if I just did one tone color. So I decided to do a black swirly fur on the top and then a blue swirly fur on the bottom. Awesome. Um, and you'll see that process right about here is when I add the other part. Oh, that looks so good. So, um, and then this is, this part right here, there's just not enough fur to make it all the way around, but I'm hoping my jeans will actually cover that. So, um, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. I mean, there's a lot of hours that go into this. It's not something you can just say like, ah, oh, it's so easy to do. It's not. This is when, hard work. <laughs> when I was at FWA in the artist alley, I remember overhearing somebody next to me talking about... They're complaining about how expensive fursuits were and how they were like, I made my own and it was super easy and it only cost me this much money and their suit, like, I don't want to say it was bad, but it wasn't professional. And it just makes me really upset when people spread things like that because it's not easy and it's not cheap if it's not just a one-time thing, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it gets really frustrating to hear after a while. People are like, oh, I only made this for... A 300 why are you charging this much and it's like well <laughs> because we've been making it for so long three hundred dollars adds up when you do it 50 times with um with first suit making um now space now that you have a little foot in the door <laughs> <laughs> so dumb <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was a bad one. <laughs> Lame. Um, I have a question for each of you. Um, what did with with making suits and such? What did you find that was difficult, or what did you think was going to be difficult that you found easy, and what did you think was easy that you found difficult? Ooh. See, even you have to think about that. <laughs> we're both, we're, you can't see me on the other end, but I'm basically doing the same thing as Moths here. I'm just like, I'm stroking my beard. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what was the most difficult thing? What was easy that I thought would be difficult? I would say, huh. well, when I first started making suits, I would have to say like making Working with Minky was one. I worked with Minky to make a raptor suit, and I thought it was going to be extremely difficult, but I actually finished that suit really quickly because I didn't have to shave anything. And even though the character was very elaborate, I didn't have as much problems with it as I thought I would. And what I thought would be easy that was difficult was trying to figure out how to sew patterns, I guess, from the inside out. Uh, for example, on my girlfriend's jumping spider suit, the abdomen, like the, the tail, I made that thing four times before I got it right, just because of the U markings on the side. I thought that was going to be easy and I would get that done in one day. No. <laughs> it's hard to think um, what was easy I thought was difficult, what was difficult I thought was easy. Um, I thought that putting foam on the shoe itself was going to be difficult just because, uh, the shoe that I had, it's got a bunch of mesh on the top. So it allows my feet to breathe when I'm at work and I was worried and I was just looking at everything. I'm like, how is everything going to stick? Like, this doesn't make sense. And, um, even though I had the instructions in front of me, I was looking at the layout of this and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Like... 
I, d- I, did, I, I, laid, I did like the duct tape of everything and then I laid out the duct tape on the foam and then I cut the foam out and I was trying to put it on the shoe and um, I th- actually thought it was going to be really hard but then as I was putting it together I could see it coming together and I saw it in my head and I'm like this is actually a lot easier than I thought it would be um, but the, the hard part was the toes um, mm-hmm. That I thought would be easy was getting those toes down because I've seen it on so many fursuits and I actually pulled up tons of fursuit like pictures and mm-hmm. feast paws and I was thinking like how how does how does it go from this to that um, and I was I remember like touching like other people's feet paws and they all seemed like firm and um, I thought that would be really easy to like to do the toes and it's actually not because like if you do it too small the the pattern around then there's not enough room to stuff in. And then if it's too big, then there's too much stuffing and then it might not be, might be too big for the shoe. Um, as I was uploading pictures online, people were like, well, if you, uh, you can put your, sh- your toes on top of your shoe and that'll make it easier if you have big feet. And I'm like, but if I put it on top of my shoe, then it looks stupid. Um, <laughs> so like I was just, I was going through, I think the longest time took about two hours to finish those toes. It took forever to do it. Um, the sewing also, I thought would be really, I didn't know that that's, there was sewing involved. And so I'm like, ha, the furring, gonna be a piece of cake. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not. Like, like you can't just use an X-Acto knife on, on fur. Like you, you gotta have a good pair of scissors because I mean, if you tear just in the wrong place, fur flies everywhere. So I'm just like, Oh my god! And like, and then like sewing it, I realized that I sewed one of the toes um, too tight, and so I realized that I messed up on the duct tape itself. So I actually had to go re-duct tape one of the toes, and then cut out a whole new pattern and start over again. And that was around four o'clock in the morning, and I was tired at that point. I'm like, mm. I want to finish this pot. I really want to finish this so bad. Um. And so I had to start all over just for that one particular one. I guess you just learn from your mistake at that point. You do. And you, when people say making anything, cosplay, fursuits, plushies, whatever, brings blood, sweat, and tears, there's blood, there is sweat, and there is tears. Yeah, there is definitely tears. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely so tears. Like, bad. Just today, especially blood, today, my finger, there's a Band-Aid on it. I accidentally dipped the first knuckle on my middle finger into just a crease of hot glue on a foot. Oh my God. The hot Ouch. glue, the <laughs> hot glue. Oh, I can't tell you like, okay. It sucks. <laughs> I wish I was wearing like baseball gloves or something like things that like fit around your like hand. Cause like latex gloves aren't going to do you anything. I was kind of wishing I had something else to insulate because to get certain pieces of the foam to stick together even the wonder clips weren't doing anything. So I would actually have to get in there. And I got, I think my fingertips actually got burnt so much that I got used to the, the hot piercing, like, like hotness of the glue. And it didn't bother me anymore. But that, at that point, I was just like, I'm so tired of glue. There was glue on my fingers. <laughs> I like to pull it off my, like, off my shirt. And there was just glue in places I didn't want glue to be. <laughs> you do get used to it after a while. Like, if if I need something to dry quickly, then I will physically spread the hot glue with my finger. Just depending on the temperature I'm using. But what I use, I actually made a glove just out of felt. And you can see, like, glue and fur stuck all on it. That's because this is my glue spreading glove. I will take spots where I know there'll be exposed hot glue and I'll pinch it together with this and I can't feel it. Oh, I wish I thought about that. I could have done like a like a snow glove or something. That might have been a good idea. <laughs> so I'm probably going to remake that glove to be closer fitting. The only I only use it for when I'm holding two pieces of foam together. Uh, things you need dexterity when you're working so I couldn't wear a glove all the time but just for when you need to press down foam it works great. I have a suggestion for you then. Um, I use Kevlar gloves at work, and then I put just one layer of latex glove over that, and that's how I make my mozzarella. And my mozzarella, folks, I'm putting my hands into 162-degree boiling water, and I don't feel a thing. So 
I, I'm just now thinking about this. I'm like, why did I think about just borrowing some gloves from work? Um, <laughs> that, I could have just solved so many problems right there. So, uh, and they come in different sizes. And then, of course, See, but now, the, th now this time you know. Now this time I know. <laughs> so I will say, I remember you mentioning latex gloves earlier. I've never tried that before, but only thing I can think of is, what if that latex melts into your finger? Please don't use latex gloves if you know they might melt. Yeah. There's, that would, there's that like, would be horrible. I know there's like latex free gloves and stuff. There's different ones like there's food grade, there's medical grade. I probably would use the medical grade ones just because they're a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I'm going to share some pictures that um, some of the viewers have sent into the chat. So this first one comes from... Oh, that's cute. Robin Birdie 17 And this these suits, I'm assuming both of them were made... Um, or one of them was made by Disney Mudkip, who is also a good follower of ours. And a friend of mine, I'm Utomo. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic game. Can I just say that? Everyone should play this game. You'll get addicted to it forever. Agreed. <laughs> it's so much fun. And you learn so many things about friends that you just didn't think you would ever learn about. Um, this is so cute. And so It's a good way to start the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I always wake up and I get my Mitomo points. Yep. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the best. Sorry, we're we're going on a Mitomo tangent. <laughs> we we have to. <laughs> um, it says uh, I got my first first suit from Disney Mudkip, and I love him. He's the red panda on the right side of the photo, and his name is Jason. So this is the red panda on the right side. That's actually really cute, Disney. That you did a great job on that you first suit. You did. I love <laughs> the muscle shapes. I do too. I like the little teeth. <laughs> <laughs> the little things. I always think it's fun. Um, each fursuit maker is a little bit different. Or it's actually a lot different. And if you look at it enough at their fursuits, you can actually see what their signature is on each one. Um, like, uh, uh, what's that one fursuit maker that I just hate? I don't <laughs> say their name. No, I'm not going to. Oh, that's right. I shouldn't say their name. I won't say their name. Um <laughs> Because that would be really bad. I'll just say that there are some fursuit makers out there that are really well known that use a technique called cookie cutting. Yeah. And, Ugh. and if 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 you Let, okay, wait wait what? wait hold on let let's clarify you, you that you don't hate them you just don't prefer their style. <laughs> okay, I'll just say their style sucks. Can I say that? <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Ah, uh, well, how it's too late now. It's not like I'm going to edit this part out. <laughs> it has been done. Sorry, sorry. I was I was trying to give you some saving grace, but it was just wasn't happening. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just okay. Look, it's it's this is how I see it. People go out of their way to design their like their fursona to be as unique as possible, and then you go to a maker, and all they do is the same fursuit layout for every single character. You can't see the the uh, the special things about your fursuit in it because they every single one of them looks the exact same the only difference is the color that's the uh -huh. only thing and that that bugs me and so i'm just like why go through all this time and all this trouble to go to someone that's just going to do the same thing over and over again now there is another maker that i do know of that they make every suit is different from the next um and i got a chance to meet them at a smaller local convention and here's the crazy thing. I cannot figure out what their signature is because they change each fursuit every single time. And I kind of like that because it keeps me guessing. Um, so with some, I can see it's in their eyes. and some of them, it's the way they do their ears. It's the way they do their face, how they do the hands or the feet paws. Um, everyone has a signature look to their fursuit. So um, I haven't seen enough of Disney's fursuits to know or Disney mug kips. I can say Disney's because <laughs> I don't want to get them mixed up <laughs> um, to know what the signature move is yet or their signature look. But it's, this is really cute. Um, the next one is from Bricks. And the story is, is very excited as this is my first ever scratch built wearable helmet. Um, just base coated it. 
And uh, obviously as my first helmet, it's uh, got some slight issues with the sizing and the muzzle. It's a little off center, but nothing major. I'm currently working on a fursuit of armor for this. Oh, I want to <laughs> see that. Mm. Gauntlets are next. Helmet and soon to be armor. Um, most likely going to be a reflective visor in the cover of the eyes and find some plumbing or pluming. Um, helmet is based of the adventure game Armello. Oh, I remember the game Armello. I think that's a Kickstarter that looks game. Sweet. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so that this... was the visor shape, the the eyepiece. That's uh, pretty. I like how they piece. incorporated how an actual canine eye looks into like mm -hmm. a helmet slit. Mm -hmm. That is pretty nifty. That's really cool. I like the way the muzzle looks, actually. I think it's kind of cool. Finish it, please. Yes, <laughs> yes we, please. we must see more of it. Um, I think Brix does a lot of different... Oh, yeah. We featured um, Brix's art a long time ago on our show, but I really like their artwork because it's edgy. Edgy in the way that there seems to be, like, no um, curves to their artwork, but it's very different and I don't know. There's just something about it that I really, really like. So I'll show you one. Like here's a, okay, like a palpal guard. Okay, this and this looks like a fur, like a first persona of sorts. But you can see the intricate design that goes into every little oh, yes. detail. There is a lot of detail. In there. That is a lot of detail. Wow. Yeah, and they they hand draw it, so it's just like phenomenal. So whenever I get a chance, if I remember to, I always try to. Um, commissioned them. They did a Jedi version of my persona. It's so awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> so now I see. I like with my artwork. I like to get very detailed with things too. And I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark, but I'm gonna guess that this artist really enjoys doing this. <laughs> Like filling in all these little intricate detail details and, and seeing how far they can go. I mean, there's not just the decoration, but I like that you can see the depth and the different plates and stuff and how they overlay. It's just, it's really nice. They're actually in chat, so you can compliment them now. Again. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Times two. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they do enjoy it. They do enjoy those little designs. Yeah, I can get lost in doing that kind of stuff. Just drawing leaves and just all the little edges. And I understand. <laughs> now, this is by Rebel Savant. And they said, this is Agro's fursuit head. I fixed the ears a little and I fixed some spikes. I had to remove the cardboard eyes that I could see out of uh, because they broke. Um, I hope to fix them soon and get a different type of mesh for them. I also worked on the muzzle some more, worked on the nose holes to get a, a better airflow. And next on to fur and other stuff like teeth, tongue, real eyes, etc. Thanks for any feedback. So this is their work. Um, I actually do have a suggestion for the eyes. Um, if I remember back when I asked Telephone about her eyes, she said that, that she used the same type of material that you would use on a screen door. Um, because you can see out of it incredibly well. But you can still paint on it and get the details. So if that's something you guys are looking okay. into, that's something you can do. And then there's other meshes that you can look into, like at Home Depot and stuff. Um, I really like the shape going on here. I like how you actually got the elongated snout that I see Dutch Angel Dragons have. Some of them go a bit too short. The only suggestion that I would make is maybe add a strip of foam in the ears to give it more depth so it's not flat. Unless they said they did new ears. I don't remember the description. But that's the only other thing I'd add. Other than that, it is perfect. Um, says I fixed the ears a little and fixed some of the spikes. So... Yeah, maybe some yeah depth. I would just add a little strip of foam in there to give it some depth so it's just not flat foam. And other than that, though, I, I like it a lot. You can see there's a lot of detail in here, so... It's very recognizable. Yeah. Like, you did capture the right shape and everything for, for an angel dragon. I mean, you just look at it and you know 
what <laughs> it is, and that's always good. <laughs> yeah. And really then like adorable too. What's what's also important to know too is that um, when you're building like foam onto this is what I realized too uh, when I was putting foam onto the shoe, um, it doesn't necessarily mean a ton. A difference if you make all the different etches and stuff in there because at the end of the day you're just going to be laying uh, duct tape over that to get your template and they're going to be laying foam over or fur over that so they're not going to see all the different like little cut marks here and there but the cut marks do help you kind of find make it easier for you to lay the duct tape over and then design everything over that so that's why there's all these like intricate marks here which i'm assuming that they're going to duct tape eventually it'll make it a lot easier to get that final shape so um just a little thing there and i can see some numbers on here too or some some markings so it looks like they're they've marked in specific areas where they may cut or where they may put fur which some people do like i did that too um on the feet paws on one of them at least so that's that one i have another one where are you at? Ooh, ooh, show us your show us your duct tape. Ah, so much paper. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, what are you shopping for? What do you got there? What's on sale? Oh, Christmas trees. Christmas trees. Oh wow, we are way past Christmas. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I just took all the tape off the toes and traced them on pre-cut fur. I actually have to. This, this fur is already short, but I have to shave it more since it's a realistic suit. I'm not going to do that on stream, though, because it's kind of loud. I'm just patterning things out here. Um, and I'm doing the bottom of the foot now. This little tiddly bit. Oh, that looks nice. Um, this will also be my first time doing indoor feet where the paw pads are at the bottom, but I think that will be similar to how to do hands, so it shouldn't be hard. Um, now, are these for you, or is this for someone else? This is for me, since it goes with my Wolf Link cosplay. Okay. Um, I just want an excuse to wear a fursuit at an anime con without getting too much scorn. <laughs> and so, when you're when you're doing this, if, if you were to do this for someone else, like, let's say me, would you have to, like, have me send in a measurement of my full foot? You would send me a pair of shoes that you already know fit you. Okay. What about just for the sock paw? You would send me a pair of socks that already fit you. <laughs> so, pretty much every sock. <laughs> Just as long as it's a, a thicker sock and not like a sheer one or anything. Right. No knee high space. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like the knee highs. The stockings are the best, but they really seem to like rip on the seams a little bit. You get a <laughs> run in your stockings. That's not good. <laughs> You can't go out like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, from Disney Mudkip now. Um, I only work on her when I have spare time, and this is what I have so far. She's getting there. This is the secret fursuit head work in progress. So we don't know what the fursuit head is for, but we know it's a secret. Ooh, I like the eye shape going on a lot. And this was posted Maybe a month ago. suits in this world. Oh, I like Grumpy that. Suits. That's a great Grumpy way to describe them. <laughs> it be, it's, it's funny too when you do see a grumpy suit and then like the voice that comes out of it, it's like, Hi, I'm so and so. And it's like, I'm so confused. Are you grumpy or are you happy? <laughs> Which That's one are you? That's problem with me and Crick. Uh, because he's a, a buff, angry pirate man, but I'm not. So I don't, I can't talk in suit. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'll take off the head and the headless lounge and people are just like... Because I wear oh. under muscle padding that's really big and when I take the head off, they're like, that's not a man. <laughs> oh, it's just like that one suitor I met at MFF14 where he had the boobs on his first suit. But it was really a guy that was behind it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Most of the time when I see super feminine suits like that, it is, uh, well, either... I, I guess I'll say guys, but I don't know the gender they go by. But the, they have female characters. See, I've never I... seen an actual uh, cis woman wear a feminine suit like that before. If it was me, it, I would definitely wear put like have a little bit more padding so the boobs are available. But I'd be like, I'm still a man. I just have a little uh, extra baggage up here. <laughs> 
Well, see, I've been in the fandom long enough to know that I should just expect that with female suits having male wearers inside, but it's still like a surprise every time. <laughs> And vice versa. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, too, is I'm really worried because, like, here, here's what kind of bugs me, right? So it is rude and it is very offensive to touch a woman in her boobs, just in general. But when they're in fursuit, you just don't know if they're male or female. So, like, even, <clears throat> even though you shouldn't touch in that area, sometimes, like, you brush up against that area, and I'm always like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, wait, you're a man? Okay, sorry. Okay, I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> and you just don't know if their boobs are in there or if not, and I feel so bad. Either way, like, if you see a super feminine suit, don't go up and start groping it. Respect everybody. Honk, honk. Is- oh, they're not real. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be made into a, <laughs> a picture. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Honk honk. <laughs> Anyways, um, this last little submission here, this is uh, from Angelina, and they said, Yay, I got one of my fursuit feet furred. Um, so, this is actually a video, and I've just silenced the video, so you can just, so it's not as super loud. Um, feet furred. So, there's one foot that's been furred. Nice. Good job. such a good feeling at the end when you just see the whole project come together. I know, it's, it's <laughs> always uh, a few points I would finish a suit or even get a phone based on it and I would just start crying so so happy with it. Uh, it's what? just, it's such a, like, it's like it took this long to make one. Oh, it's going to take forever to make the other. <laughs> it, it was especially with, uh, with Crick's new suit. His uh, original suit was made, I think, in 2012 and when I remade him about a year ago, I refrained from comparing the two until it was completely done, and when I did, I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I lost what I was going to say. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, oh, so at the, at the panel, because I'm actually taking these feet paws with me to BLFC, I've decided, because it took so long just to make one fursuit feet paw totally furred, I'm actually going to leave the other one completely bare. So you can see what it looks like when it's done and what it looks like when it's foamed. And I actually kind of like the look at the foamed. Um, and I'll have those up and available at the panel itself. And I'll just leave them. I'll wear them. And then I'll take them off so I can dance around and stuff. Um, which, folks, I can't dance at all. I, I make, I'm make. i totally pulling BS on this one. But I'm doing well, it anyways. Thing, you're going to this panel. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm reading it. <laughs> so you guys can you know come up and take a look at it and whatever and whatnots. So it's pretty cool. Um, I guess for this moment now, what we're going to do is um, while you're working on your your sock paws in the background, let's go ahead and open up to Q&A, folks. The Q&A where you can ask us any question you'd like to. You can ask our maker here questions about fursuit making. You can ask Poonia and I about pretty much anything you want to as long as it's hopefully relevant to the show and not about, like, what's our favorite planet. That's just, it's obvious. I love all the planets. I'm space. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm going to write down the layout as to what the questions should look like oh come on but you like stars more than planets absolutely <laughs> so that's how you're going to write down the questions so we know and then we'll go from there um, I'll take the first question and then Punya you take the next one and we'll just kind of go back and forth Okay, sounds good. Okay. So the first question is from Griffonius. What is your favorite musical instrument? I'm hmm. guessing this goes to all of us. I like... Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like tacos. <laughs> no, I'd have to go with a violin. I don't know. That one just... like violin. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I, I played. Uh, got frustrated with my orchestra teacher, so I quit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was in um, elementary school, I played viola for two years, and I never retained anything from that. But it was fun <laughs> at the time. 
Um, I prefer the piano. I learned how to play the piano, and it's such a beautiful instrument, and it comes in many different varieties. I like the ukulele because it is small and happy and reminds me of the beach. Do you also think of fat people, too? I love fat people, though. <laughs> so do I. That's why I'm huge. Not really, though. I'm not as, I'm not as huge as you think I am. Tommies are the best. My uh, my roommate Simon, he loves he loves. I won't say he's a chubby chaser. I've heard that as a term, but I think it's cute. <laughs> but like, I'll come in the door and he'll be like, "Hi, how are you?" And then he'll go down to my tummy and he'll be like, "Wub wub 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 wub," <laughs> and then he'll give me a hug. <laughs> and it's cute. <laughs> it's just cute. So. <laughs> We have a lot of really like we have some cool we have some cool roommates. Simon's a really cool guy, um, full of knowledge, and it's he's really funny when you get to be when you find roommates that are just as weird as you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the best. It's the best. Um, he's probably out there with with Felix because he comes home about this time, so he's probably working on his first suit, and Felix probably has this up loud so everyone can hear it. So hi, Simon, if you can hear me. Um, <laughs> So that's that. What's the next question? Uh, the next question is from Eisen. And he says, how many fur cons have you been to? Oh, I gotta think about this. I gotta think about this. Me too. Potato con. They probably want to know which ones too, I would assume. So I have been to FCN, which is now Motor City, Furcon, uh, FWA, MFF, AC, and Great Lakes Furcon. I'm counting mine you up. Still, you still counting? <laughs> well, I, I get, I get so confused. I've, I've been to five. Does it count how many times you've been to it or just the convention itself? I think just the convention itself. Okay. So potato con, BLC, furry unlocked, MFF. Four. I've been to four conventions, but I've been to a few of them multiple times. So I've been to Potato Con, also known as Fur Idaho. I'm just kinda lame. Um <laughs> There's what? nothing in Idaho. I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great pun. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that one um, I've been to Biggest Little Fur Con twice and I'll be going back for a third time this year um, I've been to Furry Unlocked twice it was originally called Unthercon and then they changed it to Furry Unlocked and that was a local convention in Utah I think I met one of my fans there actually or one of our fans I might have been Matthew I'm not quite sure I always forget their names I'm so sorry that's why you guys have to wear your name tags um, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I, I, you know, it's just trying to remember like a thousand people's names at once. It's impossible unless you're like a secret agent. And then MFF was the one that I went to first. And I don't know when the next time I'll be there, but it was the most memorable con as it was. <laughs> There's absolutely Gas no con. pool on this at this convention, but we'll call it chlorine gas con. <laughs> no. Yes. It's so funny that that was your first con. <laughs> <laughs> For her first first con together, <laughs> your first MFF. <laughs> and someone throws the chlorine jar down the stairwell. That's <laughs> so memorable. <laughs> I'm so glad I, I was confess, there. I confess, it was me. I wanted space to remember this con forever. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> Watch, they're going to come like question you now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what about you? I've only been to FWA, but I've been five times. So it's it's only about forty five minutes away, and I can't go out of state currently. But Hello. I think there's one in Florida that I would like to try to go to someday. You so can which one's that? Take a train. <laughs> I just know that there's one down there somewhere. <laughs> I think there All is right. a second furry con trying to start up in Georgia, though. It's all on Facebook it's somewhere. Yet? Hmm. Do we know what it's called yet? Furry peaches. I would hope so. I I don't know. I can probably try and find it. It's an innuendo. <laughs> oh no! I just got it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
some of them out there won't be like, I don't get it. Don't Google it. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> Make sure your filter's on. Um, is it my turn for a question? Yes, it is your turn. Okay. Disney Mudkip. What animals would you love to see a fursuit of? P.S. Thanks for the kind words. And Secret is her name. And she's a hyena. Oh, it's so that suit that we looked at. That's awesome. Her name is Secret. So animals I would love to see in a fursuit. Or of a fur, fursuit. In of. a fursuit? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that bear in a fox fursuit. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, you don't see too many monkeys. That's true. I guess they're too human-esque. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. What about a dolphin? Like Fappy the dolphin? <laughs> They actually already have a fursuit of that one. I want to see, like, I don't know about animals, but I would love to see, like, a Lisa Frank suit. (laughs) There is one. There is? It's realistic, yeah. It's really cool. Oh, my gosh. Link it. Whoever has it. I don't know how to search it. (laughs) Uh, I find that second Georgia Furcon. I'll link it in chat, their Facebook page. I just think it'd be fun to work with the colors and stuff. I would like to see some gastropods, like snails. I would like to see a snail suit. Oh, that oh, would look yeah. to make a snail suit. <laughs> That'd be way cool. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what I want to do. I need to put that on my discount list. I don't know how to go about doing it, but I want to do it. Oh my god! If someone made a fursuit of an ant, then you could have like a fursuit pretending to step on the ant fursuit. That'd be a perfect picture. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it would be terrible, but um, I've seen spider fursuits. They're quite scary. Um, no, not the one that your girlfriend has, but <laughs> that, it's, it's this other that one. That was adorable. It was actually, it was a really funny co- crossbreed. Um, it was a wolf spider and it was literally a wolf oh, meshed into a spider. <laughs> I've seen that one. That one's cool. <laughs> that one's really cute. But as far as animals go, I think I'd like to see more jaguars because those are more ancient animals. Um... And I'd like to see more, like, maybe extinct animals would be kind of cool to see. That's what I was just thinking of, like, extinct or... Um, like a woolly mammoth. Mm-hmm. More like prehistoric mammals and things like that. Yeah. Even dinosaurs. A <laughs> saber-tooth tiger. I'm hoping to oh, make we'll it. Oh, see lots of those. Triceratops <laughs> soon. Ooh, that sounds oh, fun. Oh, yeah, dinosaur fursuits. Or we could just, you know... Buy a bunch of those inflatable dinosaurs and run around. <laughs> They're becoming very popular. I know. Those are so cool. Finally, the... Oh, yeah. You know, you don't see a lot of horses either. You see, like, one or two. That's about it. Mm. Or Greek mythology or, like, Anubis would be a cool one to see. There's a bunch of Anubis, actually. Well, forget yeah, I them. them. I want to see more. <laughs> <laughs> A snake would be a really interesting fursuit. Because the only way of their moving around would have to be like on a skateboard. They can't have like, <laughs> they can't have any sort of arms out. They got to figure out a way to like move around. So they get like one of those, two of those hoverboards and link them together. <laughs> it reminds me of this. This is a video that's a kajillion years old. I don't even know if it's still up, but I think Eno made this alligator costume for a local play or something. Yeah. Like, belly. That video tickled me whenever it was posted a long time ago. I think it's still up. Isn't it? Gosh, it was the best. You know what? <laughs> um, Punya, you should uh, see the next question, and then I'm going to go see if I can go find that video. Okay, the next question is... Awesome. It's <laughs> from Revel Savant 99 and they say, Do you like cookies as much as me and my friend? And they have a link. Unfortunately, I can't show it on the stream, because... This is not running from my computer, but I'll take a look. Oh, that is pretty adorable. <laughs> is it them enjoying cookies in space? No, they don't have any cookies right now. But they do want Un- some. <laughs> Unplug and then replug in. How is that? Better. Okay. Sorry, all the cookies while you weren't there looking. You go. <laughs> 
disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the face on on that one. You're just, it's just like <sighs> again. How, how effing dare you? <laughs> Well, do you love cookies that much? No, I actually don't like cookies as much. No, you you can't eat eat eight gallons of Oreos. Oh no no no! Oreos <laughs> are something completely different. <laughs> don't ever question me on the Oreos. I never. They're will. linking you the video in chat, by the way. Are they? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I gotta go down Just and scrolled way up high <laughs> so we can read the questions. Yeah. Oh my God! It's. <laughs> <laughs> this was posted in 2011. Oh gosh, 2011. <laughs> I'm glad they don't delete their old stuff. I hope the sound's still in it too. <laughs> yes. She is like freaking stupid as hell. Look at look at telephone man. <laughs> Arms. How young she looks. That looks that looks gross. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I crawled inside the <laughs> park. I'm gonna i I'm just gonna mute it just a little bit. <laughs> what was she cosplaying? Was it for a Peter Pan? Oh, <laughs> Shut up, really? Oh, jeez. I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh, gosh. Oh, they say it was for a play. So she gets into the suit, and then she just, like... Yeah, she just rolls around. <laughs> it looks fun. I wonder if it she does. still does oh, it. Oh, my gosh. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she still has this because that would be awesome <laughs> just kind of see it like stroll around and be like oh my god I know who that is <laughs> oh my gosh that is so great I love that it's still up oh and um, we'll take a few more questions and then well, I guess we'll end our show because we don't want to go too late I'm sure you got to sleep uh yeah actually uh I have to go to bed early because I have a job now oh yay for you yay so you Pun get with the adult schedule and Punya works for uh, the competition. I would do. We can't be friends anymore, Space. I'm sorry. Nope. We're done. I'm sorry. We're, We're done. done. We're done. <laughs> this is our last <laughs> show. <laughs> what? Do you both have cheesy jobs now? No, but if she were to get a cheesy well, job, that would be is. so rad. <laughs> He's a cheese monger. I'm just a cheese miner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think the next question is yours, Space Buddy. I can't figure out where I am at because I had to scroll down. You oh, squirreled oh. down. <laughs> um, Quinsecticide. Oh no. Uh, this is what. Do That's you know? my girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Moths have you always been the most beautiful angel? I know you as now. Oh. All right, we shut the fuck up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just I'm messing with her. Love you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> You're so gay. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, for for some people, if you if you use the word like the G word. Out, they always think it's like a derogatory term, but I feel like if you're gay or lesbian, you should be able to use that word just as Agreed. much as, <laughs> as just as much as other people use other words. So, I used up my one curse word. I'm sorry. That's not a curse word. No, I said the f word under my breath earlier. Oh, uh, oh. Well, we did not hear. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, so th there you go. It's still considered. Um, I'll ask the next question since okay. I won't consider that last one a real question. <laughs> um, Huskel Wolf. Any advice for an artist starting out digital art? Try your best to not trace. <laughs> and if you must reference people's art, try to give credit. Absolutely. Oh, don't try to give credit. Give credit. <laughs> give credit. <laughs> give credit. <laughs> Always give credit where credit's due. Mm hmm. Um,. Just keep practicing it every day. Um, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to be like, 
well, this program's better, and this tablet's better, and sometimes they're right, but don't, you know, you don't have to drop, like, $600 on a tablet to do good art. Doing art every day is going to make you do good art. <laughs> um, so, uh, just keep practicing. Have fun with it. Don't feel pressured to... Um, do a lot of things or take on a lot of work. I would say if you're interested in doing like commissions and stuff, um, draw for you and just cause you want to and not because of what other people expect of you. You look just so put together right there as you just like rest your, your hand. On your <laughs> chin. You're just like, I'm ready for the next one. Um, all right. <laughs> Um, I'll just keep firing them off. Okay. Um, from Dominic the Raccoon, how long do you suppose your first suit will last space? I don't know. I haven't built it yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the process of building it. <laughs> Hopefully forever. Um, from Marlo, what's your, what movie are you most interested in this summer? Ooh, that's a good question. Um. Zootopia part two. <laughs> it's already coming out <laughs> oh gosh I'm not really sure um, oh, what movies are coming out this summer when does when does the the second Incredibles movie come out is that this year they're coming out with the second one yes <laughs> about mother effing time <laughs> it only took him forever Jeez. so I am excited to see that one I don't know if it's this year but it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, is the oh 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 X Men? I'm really excited for X Men to come out. Ooh. What about you, moths? Pete's Dragon. <gasps> I do oh, want to see yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the uh, Alice in Wonderland movie as well. Oh, yes. one. such a dark movie. It's so it's so Burton-y, but there's something about it that I really like. It's almost like its own thing. <laughs> um, the next question comes from Bricks, and we'll probably end on this question. Um, <clears throat> favorite Star Wars character? Han Solo. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> And all the Ewoks. <laughs> Dang it! I was gonna say the Ewoks because they're so freaking cute. Ewoks get so much hate. I love them. <laughs> they're the best. They are the best. Oh crap! Um, there is a there's a Jedi out there. I can't remember what planet she's on. This is the one planet that has like all the giant flowers on it. But she wields two lightsabers. She's so cool. Definitely not Kylo Ren because, oh my god, that guy has such a big nose. <laughs> if he were to sneeze, we would all be screwed. <laughs> Every movie needs a Snape. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a whiny... It's like watching Anakin Skywalker all over again. <laughs> like the first two movie or the second and the third episode. It's like watching that all over again, but with this new version of Kylo Ren. I'm just like, ah, I can't stand watching you. <laughs> what about you? What about Star you? Star Wars. Yep. You don't watch Star Wars? Nope. <laughs> what about Star Trek? Nope. I like I I like um Lord of the Rings. Okay. Yay. Favorite Close Lord enough. of the Rings character. Sam. He's too pure, too good, cinematic style. Sam. Thank Wynn you. Gens. I like Sam too. I like the elves from Rivendell. And I like Aowen. <gasps> Aowen. <laughs> she yeah, Aowen's cool. All right, folks. Well, that is the end of our show there. We do appreciate all the different questions you guys asked, and I'm sorry that we weren't able to get to all of them. Um, hopefully, at this convention that I'm going to, I'll be Skyping or scouting out some uh, new moderators to maybe do videos where we can answer all these questions. Um, 
other than that, Moths, we uh, we thank you for coming on and showing us how you were making those first two feet. Feet. Uh, there you go. Socks. Socks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting there. I was getting there. Um, the socks. And then, of course, our next one, we haven't decided on the next segment of what we'll be building. Probably something easier, like a tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully mine will be easy because it would just be like a bear tail and bears don't but really hey, have tails. But hey, you wanted to take on the challenge, so. Yeah, I like the challenge. The challenge is fun. <laughs> See, um, we can slowly just build build you a whole, like, I don't know, we could do a whole first full suit piece by piece, but at least a partial. I think that would be fun. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. A partial would be doable. A full suit is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just going to put a pillowcase over me and call it quits. You know? There you go. Make a temporary fursuit suit that you see the guys with like cardboard dog heads. Yeah, or like a potato sack or whatever. That'll work. There you go. <laughs> be a space pillow. Yeah. Everyone needs a space pillow. All right. But um, other than that, folks, thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you at the con if you're going to be going there. And if not, we will see you the next time we stream. Bye. Good night.